Hello there, ladies and hello there, ladies and gentlemen. This is Orphan Last, and today I'm going to go ahead and make a video that I actually want to make. Uh, even though I set out to uh, teach you guys linear perspective and all that good stuff, uh, I still do plan on uh, teaching you guys a uh, perspective, all pretty much every aspect of perspective that I can possibly find and learn about, and everything like that. I plan on sharing it with you guys, but I find myself uh, kind of drained. Um, my last two videos are so bad that uh, I'm, I'm kind of debating whether or not I should delete them because they do not fit my quality standards. And if videos are not fitting my quality standards, then it really honestly I, I can't really see anybody clicking on that video and not waste their time. If they it, like, I, I don't want any of my videos to feel like it was a waste of somebody's time. And so <clears throat> I'm just let me know what you think about that. Um, uh, I know it's a faux pas to delete videos, but you know, uh, the last two um, weeks, uh, my last two videos were just so draining. I, I, I just, I had no enjoyment making those videos. And if I didn't enjoy making them, why would somebody enjoy watching them? So anyways, um, let me get, get into this. I, I'm still going to be teaching a little bit, of, uh, uh, well, a, a type of perspective. This is different. This is a different kind of perspective. It's curvilinear perspective, and it's also known as fisheye perspective. Okay. And uh, there's a, an artist out there. His name is David Chelsea, and he uh, he has a book out there, and he kind of brought my uh, brought it to my attention that some people use what's called cartographic projections. And you're looking at a cartographic projection right now on the screen. All right. And uh, this uh, is a, a cartographic. Uh, basically, let me dissect uh, these words here for you. Cartographic, okay? Cartographic deals with cartography. And if you're not familiar with cartography, cartography is basically uh, the art of making maps. So an, a cartographic projection is basically the manipulation of latitude and longitude lines. And why would you uh, manipulate latitude and longitude lines? Well, it's so that you can grab the content of a spherical object and flatten it onto a flat surface and have all of the content uh, basically seem be a seamless um, image and, and in order to do that seamless image you have to manipulate the latitude and longitude lines uh, and this is kind of a representation of it <clears throat> okay so uh, this particular uh, uh, let's see here let me th th this particular video I uh, not video the uh, file that you're you're looking at I picked up off of Google I'm not really entirely sure as to how I, I got my hands on it. Uh, it's a free file that you can just download. But anyway, so um, here is a panoramic image right here. And um, it's phenomenal. Um, but the thing is, is like you can see that there are uh, like major distortions, especially on the top of this building and everything like that. Um, and in order to prevent that, while you're drawing an image uh, with a uh, curvilinear perspective, is you just simply place the uh, vanishing points further apart. And, uh, and that, that would prevent uh, such extreme distortions. Um, but the whole point, the whole thing that I, I really like about curvilinear perspective is that you don't need a ruler. You can freehand this. And uh, as you can see, you know, um, even though um, like this window and uh, one second here and this window are the same distance away from each other as, as, as this window to this window, um, I think like it's not. It doesn't look as though they – like the distance apart, um, at least visually, is not exact. And so um, basically uh, a lot of the measuring techniques are not necessarily 100% uh, applicable uh, while drawing in cartographic projections. But uh, you know, whenever you're drawing um, – in this way, it's like I, I do still suggest that you don't necessarily go to this extreme, <clears throat> if that makes any sense. But anyways, uh, you can see uh, just a, a simple shift in the cartographic projection uh, can change the entire um, appearance of the image. 
um, these windows uh, seem like they're they're better evenly spaced uh, 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 away from each other. And so uh, there are some advantages and disadvantages to either approach. You can see that things over here uh, uh, at this portion of, of the image wind up looking um, pretty standard, pretty good. Uh, whereas um, let's let's take a look at how it looked in the in the other image right here. Um, yeah, well, once again, th this stuff looks pretty good over here. Um, but, uh, you know, of course, while this image has some major distortion in the spacing of the windows and everything, you go down here and you can see that the spacing from one window to the next actually looks a little bit better. The downside is, you know, you got this, everything comes into like a point. Now, of course, you know, you can crop out all the information that you don't need or what you can do is you can just keep um, whatever uh, circle or ovoid or oval sort of uh, uh, construction that you've used or grid that you've used. You can keep the whole thing. And what you can do is while you're animating, you can actually zoom in on the scene and actually follow a character as he's walking uh, through the scene and uh, just never show the, the, the edges of the picture. So um, the these are all things that you can consider if you're if you once you decide to draw it. I know that I'm showing you photographs and everything like that, but uh, the same rules apply whether or not you're taking a photo or whether or not you're um, you're you're drawing the stuff out. You can also use uh, a variety of different type of techniques. This doesn't show all of them. Um, I, I believe uh, th this just shows two different techniques uh, of making say a, a panoramic image while using. Um, uh, cartographic projections and stuff like that. Um, but uh, anyways, like <clears throat> here you can see that there's a little planet style. And this is kind of an interesting uh, style where it just kind of like the, the image up above, like this, this image uh, up here uh, is, I, I believe, a full uh, 360 degree view. Um, if, if you look over here to the right, you see this car. You're looking at the front of the car and so once we go all the way over here you're looking at the back of the same car so this is a full uh 360 degrees the the camera rotated all the way around until it it, it wound up in the position that it started taking the photo so um we we go over here and this is both of those two ends uh meeting up with one another um, so this this is a complete car now. It's no longer split up into two separate images and, uh, or two separate parts of, of the scene. It's not on one side of the screen and then on, on the other side of the screen. So this is the little planet view. And this is kind of interesting. This, this makes it so that right here you're looking – you're actually literally looking down at uh, – at, at the, the lights on this uh, particular um, bus, okay? And as you, as, as you look for, closer towards the horizon of this little planet, you're actually looking up towards the horizon. And uh, so, like, look at, I mean, can you see that? Now you're looking, you're literally looking up at this building. So you go from looking down at this fire hydrant to looking up at the building. So this 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 is a technique of having more than one camera angle all in the same image, all in one image. And so that's the benefit of using a uh, curvilinear perspective. And once again, like uh, when you're drawing, you don't need to necessarily have everything be quite this distorted. You can kind of make things look as, as neat and orderly as humanly possible. And you can rotate the camera in open tunes and have a character be walking uh, towards you and, and uh, go ahead and rotate the camera with them and have them go anywhere in the scene and, and make it all seem really seamless. Okay, and so the next technique is called the sky tunnel technique, uh, at least what's showcased inside of this uh, particular video. And once again, the sky tunnel technique allows you to be able to have um, this car be 
uh, one solid object instead of just uh, separated into two p parts, one uh, the front on, on the right side of the screen and the bo back part on the left side of the screen. And uh, one of the cool things that you can do is you can literally have a character just kind of walk around the, the sky tunnel and uh, you can just rotate the camera along with them as they're walking around the sky tunnel. Either that or you can just rotate the, uh, the uh, background and have your character walk... Um, just do a walking animation around it and everything so there there's you have a bunch of options and so this is uh the the this is kind of a, a fun little thing like here is an example of the sky tunnel okay and uh, not the sky tunnel the little planet so like <clears throat> you can actually have your character walk um through the door of this building right here and then you can have him walk closer and closer to this uh, trash can, rotate the camera, and have him kind of lean against this uh, railing here and have him just look off towards the horizon. So you go from looking down at uh, these little benches, looking down at, at the railing, looking down at the, the trash can, to looking directly towards the horizon, all in one image. So... It's it's kind of a phenomenal thing to be able to do that. Um, let, let me see if I can find more uh, things that I find found interesting about this uh, particular image. Uh, once again, I, I think... Okay, so there's a lot of distortion in this particular image right here. But, like, uh, you can have a character walk through this little dining area, walk over towards uh, the, this, the, the, this fridge, pull out a drink, rotate the camera so that instead of this door being upside down, it's right side up and have the character walk out the door and have people wonder how did you manage to get that camera to follow your character? How, how did you get your camera to do uh, basically a rotation around your character um, without drawing a, a bunch of different backgrounds? Um, because it's, it, it's very time consuming to draw a background. Um, Here's another interesting thing where you can have your character once again walk through this door and have the character walk right here to right here basically and you can rotate the camera with him and have him walk down this hallway down here. Okay, I, I hope I hope that even though I, I kind of seemed like the words that are coming out of my mouth is somewhat of a broken record here, but Hopefully you're able to kind of visualize what I'm describing here and you're able to understand kind of the awesomeness that is what I'm describing. Um, eventually, uh, I do plan on actually drawing an image kind of like this and, and, kind of, and, and, and like all of the images that I've just been showing you and, and kind of uh, just demonstrate this on open tunes. Like here, you can have a character come up these stairs, uh, deposit some change into this uh, machine and get some water and go over to the railing, rotate the camera and look towards the horizon. You rotate the camera so that the horizon isn't upside down, and you know you 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 have an interesting scene with some camera movement um, that isn't just that doesn't just feel like it's two dimensional. Anyways, that pretty much concludes it for this video. Please like, share, and subscribe, and have a great day.